Problems 10 through 13 on our energy review all deal with work, starting with number 10. The brakes of a truck cause it to slow down by applying a slowing force of 3 times 10 to the third, or 3,000 newtons, to the truck over a distance of 850 meters. What is the work done uh, by this force on the truck? Well, there's no angle in between the uh, force and the distance, so cosine of zero is just one, so we can forget about it. And work equals force times distance. The force is 3,000 newtons. The distance was 850 meters, giving us a total amount of work of 2.55 times 10 to the sixth joules. Number 11. A student picks a 12 kilogram box of books uh, up off the ground and puts it on a shelf 1.5 meters above the ground. How much work does the student do? Well, the student does have to overcome the force of gravity, so they are lifting up with a force equal to the force of gravity. And uh, to find work, it's work equals force times distance. Well, the amount of force that you had to lift was the same as force of gravity to overcome gravity, and that would be the mass of the block of the books, 12 kilograms, times 9.8. When we plug in our numbers, mass 12 kilograms, g 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height change is 1.5 meters. That's how far you lift the books. To give you a total amount of work done of 176.4 joules. Number 12. A child pulls a 2.5 kilogram sled across their yard using a rope that makes an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. If the child pulls a rope with 18 newtons of force, how much work does the child do after the sled has gone 15 meters? Well, work equals force times cosine theta d. Well, the force that the kid pulls is 18 newtons. The angle between the force and the direction of its movement is 25 degrees, so cosine 25 and the distance is 15 meters. Plug all that into your calculator and you find out that you've done 244.7 joules of work. Finally, number 13, the most challenging work problem on here. A rope is used to pull a metal box 10 meters across the floor at a constant speed. The rope is held at an angle of 35 degrees. Given that the coefficient of friction between the box and the ground is 0.45, how much work is done pulling the box across the floor if the mass of the box is 15 kilograms? So we're looking for work. And it's moving at a constant speed. Acceleration is nothing. This one's a little bit challenging because we have to remember how we did forces stuff. So here's our picture. The force pulls at an angle. The normal force goes up. Friction goes left. Force of gravity pulls downward. Well, I know that the amount of force I pull to the right, which is the force I'd be using um, in my work equation, but that force of pull to the right is going to equal the force of friction because it's moving at a constant speed. So my left stuff equals my right stuff. So my force of pull to the right equals my friction to the left. Well, I know that friction is mu times the normal force, but the normal force is not as easy as normal up, gravity down because there's a pull at an angle. As I said, you got to remember your old forces stuff. So my normal force is my force of gravity, mg, minus my force of pull in the y direction which is the sine of 35 times the force of pull. So now I'm gonna plug in what I have here for the normal force in right there with mu times the normal force or force of friction. So force of friction is mu times all this stuff, which is the normal force, force of gravity minus the sine of 35 degrees times the force of pull. So now I'm gonna go back up to this equation where I have cosine of 35 degrees force of pull. That's over here on the left side, cosine of 35 degrees force of pull equals the force of friction. Well, what did we just say the force of friction was right here? It was all this stuff, but I'm just going to distribute the mu into both terms. That's why right here I have mu times force of gravity because mu multiplied by that first term and then mu multiplied by the second term. So that's why it's minus mu sine of 35 degrees times the force of pull. Now notice I've got cosine 35 degrees. I know what mu is. I know what the force of gravity is. I know again here what mu is. I know what sine of 35 is. What I don't have is the force of pull. It's one variable that I'm missing in this equation. So that's why I'm gonna solve for it because that's what we need ultimately to solve for the work is how hard are we pulling this thing? So I'm gonna try and get the forces of pull to the same side. That way I can factor them out and solve. So I'm going to add this term over to the left instead of minus mu sine 35 degrees f of p i'm going to add it over to the left which is why now in my new equation cosine of 35 degrees force of pull is untouched it's still there on that left side i added this term the mu sine 35 degrees force of pull i added that over to the left side so now it's plus that and mu f of g hangs out here on the right side and didn't do anything with it so it's still there now i'm going to factor out my forces of pull and what that leaves me 
is force of pull goes out and cosine of 35 and mu sine 35 are hanging out in parentheses. And I'm going to divide those over to the bottom here. So my force of pull, when I factor it out and move the other stuff over, I get mu force of gravity in my numerator divided by the cosine of 35 plus mu sine 35. I can plug in all my numbers. Mu is 0.45. Force of gravity was mass, 15 kilograms, times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, all over the cosine of 35 plus mu, 0.45 times sine of 35 degrees. And once I do that, I get a force of pull of 61.4 newtons. That's how much I'm pulling. So when I go back up here, my work equals force of pull, cosine theta d, my angle is 35 degrees. So we just saw for the force of pull, 61.4 newtons, cosine of 35 times the distance, which is 10 meters. And I find out I've done 503 joules of work.